Uh, dear all, welcome to demo hour, May 2022 edition, organized by hrtech.sg and hrtech.in. The demo hour series is powered by Archily. Archily is incidentally the trusted partner for parsing, matching, and data enrichment for many corporations globally. So in today's session, we will be showcasing how we can leverage technology to hire and onboard talent. Uh, before that, a quick overview of hrtech.sg and IN. Uh, we host what is Singapore's largest and curated HR technology marketplace. We have over 140 providers across eight HR categories. Uh, we are also the co-creators of the Singapore HR Tech Market Map that is uh, supported by Institute for Human Resource Professionals, the Society for Human Resource Management, Singapore Human Resource Institute, and Singapore Poly. Six months back, we launched uh, what is now India's fastest growing India focused HR technology marketplace. So we have about 45 odd providers uh, in our India marketplace. Uh, we're thankful to uh, Sherm, who's our partner for the India HR Tech Market Map. We embarked on the demo hour event series in 2019 to evangelize and promote use of HR technologies. You know, the event actually is a platform for HR tech providers to showcase their high tech solutions, thereby aiding the acceleration of adoption of HR tech. The even motto has always been to showcase demos and not presentations. So the first event happened in September 2019 at our WeWork facility in Suntech, Singapore. And then after the onset of the pandemic, we have moved to an on-demand on webinar format. Hopefully we will move back to in-person format very soon. So we have done demo hour events focused on various topics such as mental wellness tech, uh, technology for managing non-PMETs, uh, PMET is a Singaporean terminology. So non-PMET refers to blue collared workers. Then demo hour for managing um, diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging, so on and so forth. But why are we doing this demo hour today? Why are we actually having this session and talking about the increasing need for leveraging technology for hiring and onboarding talent? Number one, increasing expectations of candidates for a consumer grade experience. People have been working alongside their personal applications uh, during the pandemic. They find the current workplace applications to be very, very clunky. They want the organizations and their employers to adopt HR technology in a big way to deliver strong candidate experience. This also helps the employers to be standing out as an employer of choice thereby aiding and attracting um, top talent. Number two, the remote or hybrid workplace demands. What it has driven is employees are today looking for flexible work arrangements to manage the blurring work-life boundaries. But if organizations have a very, very rigid approach to hiring remote talent, uh, some of the organizations that we spoke to do not hire remote talent or they do not offer flexible work arrangements or they do not have the technology to enable all of these. All of these organizations are the receiving end. Hence, it becomes very imperative for HR teams to leverage the right set of digital tools to enable hybrid and remote hiring and engagement of talent. Important thing that we are seeing is a lot of VC funding into startups um, has been at an all time high, right? Uh, employees are actually quitting to become entrepreneurs. So organizations need to effectively create an entrepreneurial culture and imbibe the same into their employee value proposition to effectively attract and retain employees. And technology plays a real important part to create this uh, uh, vibrant entrepreneurial culture. And the most important of it all is the changing workforce demographics. So we have five different generations in the workforce right now. Added to that, there is a declining women in the workforce, an aging workforce, uh, increasing focus on not just diversity and inclusion, it's diversity, inclusion, uh, inclusivity, and belonging too. So the demographic shifts happening in the workforce is unparalleled. So this calls for immediate implementation of tools that can ensure better gender parity, fair recruitment and hiring practices, ensuring diversity and inclusivity in your hiring practices and onboarding policies. In fact, as per our research, um, over $5.25 billion were pumped into startups in 2021 in the talent acquisition space. 
and not just that if you look at the first uh, four months of 2022 already 2.3 billion dollars have been invested into startups that focus on talent acquisition we have seen several acquisitions in the uh, space right a lot of uh, consolidation also happening so with so much money flowing into talent acquisition with so much uh, mergers and acquisitions happening in the space a lot of companies actually going out to adopt technology for their hiring and onboarding we felt the need to do this demo hour and showcase how new age tools can help ta teams uh, to to hire and attract good talent and also achieve strong business outcome and uh, i'm extremely happy to sh uh, uh, showcase um, our expert panel for today uh, we have a uh, sarankar uh, who's a original head ta of uh, asia pacific middle east uh, africa from wipro and nidhi Srivastava, who's the ta head of uh, middle east for cognizant uh, both of them i have to admit are rep representing themselves and not their organizations so we want to ensure that the uh, hr community outside is able to leverage their uh, knowledge of this space so they would be um, asking all the three providers today who will be demonstrating the platform um, interesting questions uh, on behalf of the hr community and to present these three demos we have a higher quotient uh, led by smart we uh, who's their uh, co-founder and ceo we have multiplier represented by drew callen and automate represented by vijay p um, thank you again to all the uh, participants today um, and the expert panel and the providers can i request uh, drew to go in first of course hello everybody my name is drew callen i am the global sales director here at multiplier we're a singapore-based hr tech company pioneering the movement of the distributed workforce what we've done is we've gone to market and created a network of entities and partners who give us access to over 150 countries and through software digitize the process of employment solutions, empowering companies to onboard employees almost anywhere in the world without having to set up their own entities or subsidiaries to do it. That's effectively what we do. We are about two years old as a business. We have 180 staff across 22 countries at this point in time. And I'm very much looking forward to this process and walking you through our platform. So I will go ahead and share my screen and take you through our interface. Okay, thank you. So this is a demo account. I'm obviously not Jessica, although I'm sure she's wonderful. Uh, here we aim to capture and provide access to everything necessary for an employer to build their digital and technical relationship with their employees, all of whom are onboarded and processed through the multiplier platform. On our platform, companies are empowered to generate locally compliant employment agreements, almost anywhere in the world, set up benefits administration, so administer healthcare, for example, and set up payroll in any currency to employees wherever they're based. I'm not going to walk you through the entirety of the platform because we have 12 minutes in which to manage this entire dialogue. So instead, what I'll do is just call your attention to the navigation on the left. Um, this is where you can build the contracts and set up the admin allocation for healthcare, for example, to your team. Uh, we do have an HRMS system. That's what this is, right? So apart from contracting and payroll and benefits, um, employers are able to connect with their distributed workforce as it relates towards time off requests, time sheets, expense submissions and, and approvals, and salary revisions. Of course, they can manage all their invoices, and they can set up ad admin rights for different people within the organization. I will call your attention to a couple of really interesting resources. So our intention is to build a content engine that provides access to intelligence for all of our clients who are building distributed workforces to gather intelligence necessary to feel confident in making their decisions and building a distributed workforce wherever they want to build it. For example, we've created a tool we call a salary calculator, which gives our clients the ability to estimate total cost to company versus net income to their employees as they're thinking about hiring in different markets. So for example, if I want to hire somebody in Australia and I was going to pay them the equivalent of 3,500 US per month, Immediately, this tool gives me a very clear view of the required employer contributions in this market. So that will cost me $4,058 and the net income that the employee gets, which is $2,878 out of the budget I've allocated here. 
So we're taking the responsibility away from the employee who should otherwise do due diligence to understand how to budget for teams in different markets by creating this tool, which is available to our customers at no additional fee. The Talent Wiki is a repository of country level content, which gives you access to all kinds of intelligence around what it means to employ people in certain markets. So let's say I wanted to employ somebody in Brazil, or in this case, Indonesia, considering our markets, we're here in Southeast Asia. We've created a templatized model, which allows us access towards general salary data for various roles to hire and pay somebody in Indonesia in accordance with market demands. It gives me a view of income taxes that I should be conscious of as I build my budgeting forecast. It gives me an idea of offboarding and termination requirements in each market so that I'm not putting myself at any liable positions as we think about building workforces in different uh, environments. Going back to our product itself, I'd like to walk you through the actual process of hiring someone. So we've got three products, a full employer of record, which is we technically employ the employees and then subcontract them back to our customers. But a lot of our customers have their own entities and they simply want to outsource payroll and benefits, which we can do. That's a PEO solution. And of course, we have a lot of clients that build uh, freelancer networks and, and hire people as freelancers, and they simply need assistance in paying them because that can be challenging at the country level versus, ver, ver, based on where they're located. So in this case, we'll onboard an employee as a full-time EOR, and there's five steps. We're going to do this in minutes. So I come from uh, a background where I had my own company. It's called Greenhouse, and we had at our peak staff in 16 different countries, but I only had two entities, one in Singapore and one in Indonesia. So I know with all too much familiarity the pain points of trying to employ people in different markets compliantly. I've gone through staffing agencies, I've gone through my own entities, and I've gone through third-party EORs. And usually it's a bit of a nightmare. A lot of back and forth, a lot of redlining in contracts. It's all analog, meaning we're going back and forth over email, sometimes back and forth over phone, in different time zones. Things take a lot of time. They become expensive. I imagine many of you have been through something similar. This is one of the reasons I ran to Multiplier when I discovered what we were building. I'm gonna show you how we can build a locally compliance contract, we'll say in Indonesia, in minutes. Uh, so we're gonna start with the first of these five steps by identifying the country I wanna hire in, Indonesia, and let's assume they're a, they're a local citizen. Now we're gonna enter some basic information. In this case, I'll just enter my own. I'm Drew Callen, I'm a male, uh, I'm Hindu, uh, this is my email. That's fine. Uh, I am in sales. I'd like to be a full-time employee, permanent. Let's say the start date is going to be July 1st. And off we go. Great. Now we're gonna get into the salary component. So let's imagine my salary is going to be about 5,200 US per month. Let's imagine that uh, there is a variable performance bonus, which is every three months. It's quarterly, and it starts from my first month, which is going to be July. We'll go ahead and save that. And if I wanted to add ESOP here, I could. Uh, I would like to receive some ESOP. So let's imagine that there was a component here where I gave myself an extra $10,000 in ESOP, vesting over four years, 25% a year, fairly standard. And I will add this. Now we're going to move on to insurance. So um, in a country like Indonesia, there is a required mandated public insurance, uh, BPJS, which is mandated by the government. However, a lot of employers want to offer private insurance to their employees. In this case, it's important that I share, we've built a network of insurance partners all across the world to give our employers access to suppliers who can provide insurance to their employees. What's important about this is we did not build a global network with a global partner. We built a global network by, built, by hiring and employing local partners. The benefit here is the, price, the prices yeah, are locally based fine. and support is local. So in the, in the event that anybody has to submit a claim, unfortunately, they have somebody in their time zone who can support them. And you can see here very thoroughly the differences between these three options. These are all downloadable. There's a full PDF here, which gives you a breakup of the actual 
policy itself, what is or isn't covered, and that's available for free. Everything I'm showcasing to you, by the way, is self-serve. You never have to talk to Multiplier if you don't want to, to employ somebody through the platform. Uh, but of course, we have a team available in every single time zone to help customers to understand what their options are. Yeah. So let's say I'm feeling generous here and I'm going to provide the gold package. Now we're getting to the compliatory part of the contract. So we don't have the ability to go below the minimum requirements that are mandated and stipulated by the regulatory bodies in Indonesia. So for example, here, I can see that annual leave is at least 12 days, bereavement leave is at least two days, maternity leave is at least 12 weeks, and maternity leave is at least two days. I do have the ability to edit these, but I can only edit up, right? So if I want to add 10 days to paternity leave, I can do that here, for example. Everything else is relatively standardized now, probationary policies, um, uh, notice periods, pr uh, termination clauses, non-compete clauses, non-solicitation clauses. I can choose to toggle these on or off as I so choose. And when I'm ready, I push this button, and this is my favorite part of the entire platform, immediately I have just generated a contract. We've just created a locally compliant employee contract in Indonesia. And I would imagine many of you understand how helpful this is and how incredibly groundbreaking this is to have avoided all the back and forth with the third party, all the negotiation, all the redlining and contracts, and all the due diligence to ensure that things are being built correctly. Now I can literally send this contract to my employee if I so choose. So that's what I wanted to showcase to you today. Um, our platform is growing every day. We currently have our own entity network of about 70 markets. We have partners that give us access to another 80. By the end of the year, we'll be fully integrated and 100% entity-based, giving our customers access to more than 100 countries uh, and, and through, through our own entity infrastructure. I would love to take some questions if anybody has any, so I'll just pause here and say thank you very much for your time, and we'll be happy to field any questions. Thank you, Drew, for uh, sticking to the timelines. Uh, may I request uh, Nidhi and Sarang um, to ask their questions to Drew? Hi, Drew. This is Nidhi. Hello, Nidhi. Hi. Uh, Drew, a quick one. Uh, I'm I basically based out of Middle East, so I was just looking at it more from the perspective of the region, right? So here it is very, very imperative for us to understand uh, the work visa status or probably the nationality part of it because the contract changes based on the local demands, right? So uh, how does that imply in yeah. your uh, the multiplier? How does that work? Because those are the very, because the offer letter will change based on your uh, visa status, right? So how does that work? How does that imply? And also I didn't see anything related to uh something around background verification i think that sure. is also missing uh so i mean all these things are like imperative for us to run it uh so uh, is there somewhere we can understand those aspects yeah once the contract is generated um and we have uh we have it built in employee agreements and they have signed multiplier will run a, a background check on the individual so the kyc comes towards the end of the process okay as it relates to, towards visas um, and the, the nationality of the individual, early in the process, you may recall that we had to identify if the, uh, the candidate was a citizen or a permanent resident or if they were a foreigner, right? Um, at that stage, we would identify what's required from a visa perspective. In certain markets, we can help with visas. In other markets, it's very challenging, as you would know. Uh, so it depends on where the individual is from and where they're trying to be employed. Okay, so we are saying that in this whole flow, uh, this these two specific things are already checked uh, before the offer rollout. As we're as we're servicing you, once you tell us where your candidate is, um, so we understand their nationality and where you'd like to employ them, the first thing we'll do is tell you if we can help you or not, right? To okay. identify what the visa requirements are. Um, from there, we move into the process. Okay. And uh, sometimes the regions are like very volatile. For example, uh, their local labor law have frequent changes. Suddenly they will stop visas mm -hmm. for specific nationalities and suddenly. So how do you keep up to uh, date with the clauses in your agreement, right? Does it get yeah. regularly updated? What is your approach around that? Yeah, thank you, Nidhi. Um, yes, we check it monthly. So we have a team, we have an infrastructure team and their responsibility is to maintain the health and sanity of our contracts. 
And so we're following the government regulations of every single country on the platform and updating every single month in real time as it happens. Um, so we are as close to updating along with the, the, the changes as possibly we can be. Uh, sorry, and the last question that I have is more around the existing system integration. So multiplier is a different so, this altogether. So for example, in cognizant what we have yet people swapped and then whatever system we brought bring in, we try to see if it get integrated well with people swapped. How does the multiplier yes. platform works? Yes, so we, we can do systems integrations for clients if that's a requirement based on the components of what we're trying to structure for you. Um, and we're also building integrations with a variety of third party platforms like Bamboo HR, Zero, uh, that many of our customers use on a regular basis. That is an ongoing investment in time. We don't do integrations customized for every client, as you might imagine, that requires some, some resourcing from our side. For the right circumstance, we will. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. My pleasure. Right. Drew, this is Sarang. And I think uh, Nidhi had uh, some of the similar questions which, which I actually wanted to ask. So those are those have already got addressed. And, uh, you know, relating to updation of the data, though I find, you know, the demo and the product, uh, you know, really, really useful in, in getting the data and having a consolidated view you know, looking at salary information across uh, different countries and locations. So uh, another question, which is a bit, which is also related, I would say, is that uh, for the companies to use this tool and, uh, you know, the companies which are already working with you, uh, is it necessary for them to have their own entity in the specific country? Either is it I mean, for both for permanent employees or for freelancing, or that is something which which is addressed by uh, by your system or by your partners. Uh, that's thank you, Sanon. That's um, that's the main value proposition of our platform is we are negating the necessi the necessity for clients to have their own entities in order to employ people wherever they find the talent. So if today you're a Singapore based company, but you'd like to build a tech team outside of Asia for diversity of experience and cost efficiencies in markets like, let's say, Eastern Europe. The alternative to a platform like ours is you have to go build your own entities within those markets in order to employ them or go through a staffing agency. If anybody's done that in the past, and if there are any staffing agencies here, forgive me, but in my experience, it's been painful. There are a lot of joining fees, admin fees, termination fees, um, all of which don't exist on, on a platform like ours. So uh, that is exactly what we're aiming to achieve. It is we're trying to remove the need for you to set up your own entities in order to scale your talent base. So long. Understood. That's, that's good to know. Uh, another question I had was, I mean, looking at the demo, though you mentioned onboarding, but somehow, you know, going through the demo, I, I find that it is your, your overall system is built around compensation and benefits. So it is it starts when somebody is at the final stage or or you know the the selection decision has been made and then to to align their compensation benefits being able to you know provide for the insurer and things like that is is my understanding correct because i've seen you know more on comp and ban compared to uh, the onboarding piece itself yeah so we have many clients who are earlier in their uh, exploration of building a distributed team. And for that reason, we've invested in content creation. This is why we have access to the content we have in the talent wiki, for example. And there's an assessment tool to understand if your candidates might even be uh, uh, compliant as freelancers or contingent workers in certain markets. So depending on where you are in your process, if you're early in the stage, our benefit and our desire is to give you access to intelligence, to give you the confidence to make decisions more efficiently. If you have the candidate identified, then it's all about getting the candidate onboarded as quickly as possible. Onboarding to us is in compliatory contracting, benefits administration and payroll setup. It does not include the actual practical onboarding into your business, right? So we facilitate the technical relationship between employers and their remote workforce, uh, but we do not participate in the actual onboarding practically into the workforce or any performance management components that, that we leave that to you, the employer. Understood. Does that, does that help to answer your question? Yes, it does. Great. So another question I have is, um, uh, I mean, in, in, with regard to your customer base, right? So which is the market you, you are targeting to capture? Is it large organizations or is it those startups? 
you know, looking to expand quickly. Uh, I'm a, what would be your targeted customer for this product? Very diverse. Um, most of our customers fit in the mid-market space. Um, we do have some enterprise brands on the platform, and we do have a lot of growth businesses, which tend to be funded startups um, or fast growth SMBs that are moving into mid-market SMBs. But the majority, uh, the majority of our customers today tend to be mid-market. Um, they exist all over the planet. They have customers from, I believe, 55 countries. Interestingly, the countries on the highest demand globally sit here in Asia Pacific. It's Indonesia, India, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Um, that has been consistent throughout the course of the last 12 months. Bonus okay. information. Good to know. Thank sure. you. And no, no further questions, uh, Trio. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sarang and uh, Nidhi. Interesting questions. Drew, before you... Uh, before you go off the screen, uh, there's a question from Shahira. She wants to know if the offer letters and the payroll uh, aspects that sent out from multiplier, does the payslip reflect multiplier or the company's name on the employee payslip? Generally, it's multiplier. However, for companies that take objection to that, we can put your logo as well. Thank you very much, Drew. My pleasure. Fantastic. After seeing the demonstration of a global employment platform, we now move over to a smart tweet of Hired Quotient. Over to you, Smart. Hey, everyone. Uh, so uh, I'm the founder, CEO of Hired Quotient. Uh, very broadly, I'll, I'll talk about the problems uh, that we're solving at Hired Quotient and how exactly we're solving that problem. So last four or five years uh, that I've worked across different countries, uh, the problems, challenges uh, that me and my co-founder kept hearing uh, from hiring managers, and this is for non-coding roles. Uh, broadly, it was, hey, we, in the first round of interview, we meet significant volume of candidates who tick the boxes, but they don't have what it takes to do the job. Um, from HR perspective, we kept hearing that, hey, it's a talent war, uh, candidates are being approached left, right, center. We don't have the luxury of retaining the talent for 60-day, 90-day long process what this overall meant and candidates had their own pain points overall what it meant was the companies today need to have capability uh, to identify top skilled candidate top of the funnel that is exactly what quotient does uh, for these companies so if i talk specifics for a consulting firm we are helping a global consulting firm we are helping them uh, to screen uh, the candidates who applied for different positions, associate consultants, consultants, et cetera. Uh, top of the funnel, we do skill evaluation in a very conversational AI manner. So that's broadly what we do for them. For a lot of other startups, B2B SaaS, mid-size enterprises, we help them to screen sales marketing, business development, customer success, running the job simulation in a very interactive format. The end output is uh, the companies get an understanding on who are the top candidates who deserve their time at priority. So in nutshell, for hiring managers, what we are doing is them having fewer discussions, but the most relevant ones. So they assess more, interview less, hire better. For HRs, we are helping them to move faster with the priority candidates, give them a customized engagement with senior leaders, et cetera, so that these candidates don't fall off the radar. That's broadly what uh, Hire Quotient does. Uh, I'll quickly pull up uh, the product now. And the way we do it is uh, it's very customized. Uh, so we, we have families that we cater to marketing, to product program managers, to customer success, business development, consultant, strategy positions. And for most of us who have been hiring managers, we understand that these are a first round uh, doing the skill evaluation takes us a lot of time. And there's no one size fits all. So it all has to be very, very customized depending on what role are we hiring for. So how we have product is uh, steps. Number one, you create your own virtual interviewer. What that means is that you go to the platform, help us understand what role are you hiring for? What are some of the critical work functions that you expect the candidate to do? And within each work function, what are the key tasks and responsibilities? Now, this goes in sync with the job description that you would have. This is level one where you help us understand, hey, this is what I'm trying to assess in the candidate and you optimize based on your own requirements. 
and our team. There's some assistant component. Our team within 24 hours get gets back to you. So once um, you've created level one, our team uh, would then get back in touch with you within 24 hours to say that, hey, this is what we think a lesson for that particular role. Step two, the candidate takes the interview. Step three, once they've taken the interview on the higher quotient platform, you get to see how well, not so well did they perform and a further deep dive in report. So in entire three-step process, uh, we try and help the hiring managers and and that I talked about. Now I'll walk you through each of these steps and help you understand a bit more details. So for example, uh, let's actually go for project manager. So if uh, you're hiring a project manager, uh, depending on seniority and depending on uh, what specific task are you hiring them for, what you expect from them. So we give you a library. We have invested time to build the universe of all of these uh, job families in terms of what you may want to assess. So you, depending on your requirement, you can select, deselect. Once you have, the next thing is pretty much uh, finding out what are the tasks you expect them to do. For example, within managing people and organization, do you expect them to develop team members through ongoing coaching, et cetera? Do you expect them to develop initiators to support uh, the competency building? Do you uh, expect them to facilitate discussions, et cetera? What is not relevant to you, you can take that away. And if there's something more that you want to add, you can do that as well. So once you've done this, it allows you to say that, hey, this is at the high level that we understand you're looking forward to in the candidate. You submit this. Now, once this has been submitted, we have a product team within 24 hours would set something and our ex our add their layer of QC to say, hey, this is very customized to that particular uh, job that you're looking forward to. So this is done. Then using our platform, which can also so we send out an email to the candidate saying that, Hey, before you come for the in-person interview, take this 15 to 30 minute interview on higher quotient platform. We've kept it very engaging, very conversational so that the candidate experience is very high and the as low. We've also done uh, the other aspect that we've taken care of is the accuracy of virtual interviewers or the accuracy of the results to say a good candidate and not good candidate has to be very high. We've done blindfolded experiments uh, standpoint. Two most important things that we focus on, A, accuracy, and B, candidate experience, keeping it as close to in-person interview, conversational, adaptive, et cetera, as possible. So once you've done that, I'll take uh, to a sample. So the sample would only, uh, give level view and not go into the details, but I think that that should be. So for example, if you're doing this for sales and marketing more broadly, this is for account and BDRs, the kind of things that they have to do is doing quota planning, talking to the customers, asking the right questions rather than just talking. So from that perspective, we would test them on, Hey, can, can you do quota planning? Can you ask the right questions? If need be, can you strike a conversation with a prospective client who's got back to you on LinkedIn, uh, testing them for what is their motivation to do the job in, in a video interview format. These different components is what we would test. If they have to write an email, which is a need for most uh, B2B SaaS companies, we give them an email to say that, Hey, just go ahead and edit this email. So from that very hands-on most of Southeast Asian markets, we've also launched a feature uh, of proctoring video. So for example, we give you a scenario that, Hey, your account executive SaaS company, um, planning that if you have to hit a certain, uh, quota by end of this quarter, how many demos, proposals, commitments would you need? And we give you the relevant information there. So as a salesperson, what you're supposed to do is play with this Excel as you would do on the job. So once the next question, for example, says that, Hey, uh, you have to set a campaign and these are the five things that you have to do. The hack here is in what sequence would you do it? How this is different uh, is essentially we're not asking them to pick and choose that which five 
things are needed. Rather, we're trying to test on the application part uh, to say that, have you done in the past? If they have, they'll be able to execute this as well. So they do it and then go ahead. The next question uh, would talk about that, hey, uh, you have been, uh, the campaign has been said, you have been reaching out to clients. Some of them got back to you saying that, hey, great to connect. How would you respond in this manner? So it's much more striking the conversation open-ended. So this is where the candidate uh, has to engage, type in the answer with whatever best they think. So I'll just type thanks here and go ahead. The next says that, hey, uh, you need to start prospecting now. Um, and when you're on sales call, it's very important that you ask questions. Through those questions, you build your understanding and then deliver a pitch. So what we are saying, hey, can you ask the three most important questions to your client? So they type in what questions they want to understand uh, to ask to understand the client context. Thanks and go to the next one. The next one says that, hey, um, now that you have uh, understood what is the value prop, can you record a one minute video pitch uh, for your client? And this can be auto graded. This can also be uh, reviewed manually by, uh, by the hiring manager or the HR. We can also have more questions around, hey, what's your motivation to do the job? Hey, what makes you apply to this company? Hey, tell us something about yourself. So these are very personality communication aspects that we could cover via the uh, video interview. So this is one, I'm mindful of the time. Uh, I, want you, I want to walk you through the step three now. So once the candidate has taken this interview, what's next? So you get to see uh, this hiring manager dashboard where you see that candidate A to Z, how uh, have they, where exactly are they in the funnel? Have they taken the pre-screening? Have they taken the uh, interview on higher quotient, et cetera? If they have, what's the score? You can also see the proctoring with you and you can then uh, shortlist, reject, send out communication, et cetera. The most important part is once you understood, these are the top candidates. For your hiring managers, it's very important that you have the context on the gaps, strength, and weakness of each and every individual. Because what it does is help you to customize and tailor all the follow-on interviews for that particular candidate. In nutshell, the candidate would feel, hey, uh, these guys know everything about me. So from that perspective, uh, it makes your follow-on interviews tailored and shorter in duration. And it, it is a very, very customment. The report would tell you that uh, on high level, uh, on the things that you want them to do, how well, not so well did they perform? So this is a high level metric. Then we give you a deep dive to say that, for example, if you want them to convert sales opportunities to clients and the candidate scored 0%, what exactly were we testing the candidate on? So it's a very transparent process to say we were testing them on content management, communication. Because they got zero, our understanding is they're poor. Why they're poor? Because the candidate did not demonstrate ability to identify the key levers to improve outreach to potential client. Now, what I'm trying to tell you with insights like these, your interviewers have very solid read on what to validate, what to pressure test, and hence that is what they would value uh, from this entire report. They can see the entire chat as well if there were video submissions, et cetera. And then we give you an interviewer's guide to help you understand that, hey, how do you decode this report? But also what are some of the questions that you can ask in your follow-on interviews? So from that perspective, um, it's very, very customized to each and every job family. Uh, I have shown, I've given you overview of creating this for a project manager and how uh, the experience looks like for a sales. But we have done that very successfully for consulting, we have, uh, so as of now, we have 29 clients in Singapore and US. We have seven consulting firms. Uh, we have uh, some of the top uh, management consulting firms as our global clients. Uh, the second market that we've entered is mid-sized enterprises, tech companies, B2B SaaS, where we're helping them with the sales marketing product program. That's more broadly uh, what, what we do at Higher Quotient. So I think this is broadly what I wanted to cover. Uh, and to give you a quick sense of what we do, how we do, and most importantly, how we, we support the hiring managers and the HRs. Would love to take more questions. 
Thank you very much, Mart. Uh, you know, uh, thanks for demonstrating on your chat powered chatbot uh, powered skill assessments. Um, Nidhi and Sarang, over to you now. Hi, Smart. Hey, hey, Nidhi. Hey, hey. First thing, uh, Smart. Actually, you spoke about the in initial uh, initial interaction, right? So, in initial interaction, where you're saying that, hey, we are going to talk to the hiring manager, create a JD, and then probably uh, start asking questions. Uh, but what we have observed as a TA talent acquisition, right? We are like the JD keeps changing, right? So you end up trying to put that JD in place, and then you try to build on the overall assessment around it, and then it, hey, the JD changes, right? So how do you navigate through those? Now, the other aspect is around uh, being in HR myself, I feel it's more of a people function. So if you have a chat board or probably, you know, some a, a, a virtual interviewer sitting there and evaluating, the human touch misses, right? So there is an intervention of the human aspect. Where do you bring that in your process? That's second. And how does your, so you're creating pre-screening part of it. So as a recruiter, I would want to look at selection. So, you know, with your screening in place and bringing in that kind of an authenticity in my process, I might see my rejection going on the higher side. So how does I, you know, as a recruiter, really use that as a tool to add value? So what is a value preposition is what I would want to understand in the overall process as a recruiter, because I would really want to introduce something which would make my selections, my targets achieve faster and, you know, move faster with the quality hiring, of course. And with all these things coming into the picture, that's going to be my first question that how does the conversion happens then, right? Because okay. I'm adding one filtration around that. No, great questions. And thank you so much for putting this uh, out in front of the group. I think the f let me uh, take these one by one. So on the JD, I can't agree more with you. I think the speed at which these new age skills are coming up, skills are changing. It's uh, it's well known fact to all of us. What we at Higher Quotient have done, we've invested time to bring this library to each and every HR professional out there. In fact, very recently, we've also launched a JD generator tool. It's a free of cost tool. Go to the website, create your JDs, find out what are the skills that uh, most of the government organizations, most of the new age companies, the big corporations looking for in certain families. So that's level one. And we continue to invest effort time in enhancing that uh, library and the universe of the skills. So from that perspective, it's a constant effort that we would keep doing at our end uh, to make sure that we are fully adaptive and fully in sync with what most of the advanced companies today look for. That's number one. Number two, how do we adapt? How we test these new age skills is again, it all boils down to at the back end, our product team is constantly innovating to understand that for each new skill, how we should test it. And there's no one size fits all. For example, if you're testing somebody on data analytics, right? then you have to do it via Excel uh, modeling it, or it's best done via Excel modeling. If you want somebody to, uh, if you want to test how curious is somebody, then all, only way is you let them ask the question. So from that perspective, we are really thinking of different formats uh, of questions, be it video, be it speech, be it data modeling, et cetera, that test these new age skills in the most appropriate way. So it, it's a constant innovation on both. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, just because you're being a little specific around that new age skill. So are we saying that the system is designed to cater to the new age skills? Yes. Yes. Okay. Only those skills. But if, if we talk about other skills, no, it won't. Right. Like for example, project manager or a, a business analyst or a consultant, right? The softer aspects here matters more. So so we are saying that new age skills, yes, higher question can add value for the new age skills. Are we trying to say that? So let me put it in a different manner. So when you test for uh, any candidate, there's skill aspect, which is hard and soft. There is personality aspect, and then there is cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. We take care of the first 
aspect, which is broadly the skill set. On the softer side, we, for picking up on your example, for the project manager, we test them on stakeholder management. We test them on communication through video interview, through synthesis. We test them on, can you design the milestones? We test them on their planning. So from that perspective, we test the skills. Within skills, there are certain skills that are well-established and certain skills that are coming up as we as the organizations are growing and the, as the workforce is growing. So we keep enhancing that library to make it as robust as possible. Um, okay, and one more question. These days, there's a trend of hackathons going on, right? So how does higher question, to, can, can you integrate with hackathons kind of uh, events? Um, so more broadly, uh, so we, we do non-coding aspect. Uh, so for non-coding, wherever there are business challenges, mm -hmm. uh, as part of the screening, higher quotient can definitely play a very important role. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now to uh, address your second question, which is around the human intervention, yeah. intervention, the entire process. I think it's extremely, extremely important. And we've all learned our lessons that the moment you, you leave it, uh, the technology or you make it less human touch that is when you become brand a versus brand b compensation a versus compensation b in the mind of the candidate okay. the best is to keep them engaged what we are trying to optimize rather is your team should spend the time in doing the most relevant and the most important thing from that perspective interacting with the can making them understand the company values making them understand the company mission ask asking them to ask the questions hey what what questions do you have for me why do you want to human intervention is much in culture testing personality is where human intervention is very very important why because culture differs from each office within organization as well it differs from one office to another so it, it's very hard to test uh, via technology and humans can do a great job. So it's in nutshell, if I were to then summarize, it's trying to optimize the time that you spend with the candidate uh, at the right place so that you can also optimize the conversion of each and every top performer or skilled candidate that you want to onboard. So we are trying to reimagine how you spend, how your team spend that time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that that's on the second one. Mm -hmm. And sorry, your last question was the uh, selection. Uh, the selection. How do we uh, look at the selection part of it? Perfect. I, I'll give you a different perspective there. And most of us who have been in recruitment, we understand that the moment we narrow down our pools, we miss out on hidden gems. The age where we are, we don't have the luxury of restricting ourselves to a certain target pool. It's important to go wide. And the moment we go wide, not just the selection, what, what is very, very important. Are you able to identify candidates who otherwise would have been, if it was just CV parsing, et cetera, but they have what it takes to do the job. So I would rather say that a tool like higher quotient can help you go wide help you identify the hidden gems that otherwise may not have fallen into your process. So that's one part on where additionally we add value on the selection part. Uh, so more broadly, you have given you a very solid read and data to say that each and every decision that you make on progressing the candidate uh, to the next level, interacting with in person, making it all, giving you a backup to say what is our read based on the skills uh, that we found in the candidate and the proficiency on each of those skills. So from that perspective, e even your selection is much more data driven. You can be fully confident wherever you see some red flags. For example, this is what our system says versus what you find internally. That is potentially an area where you need to double check. So it's the overall value prop is twofold. One, going wide and identifying the hidden gems. And that today is a very competitive advantage. Most of the companies will not have that capability. The other one is being very sure of each and every decision that you take. And further, I, I would take a step forward and the broader trend that you see is also globally to take away human bias. 
from um, I will have a preconceived notion, bias, etc., all of that. How do you make use of data? You have the insight to say what skills, what questions introduce any bias, be it gender, racial, etc., and are also not as of the success of the candidate. If you are able to very pinpointed manner identify this and answer this question, that is when you, you make your interviews, your screening very, very bias-free or mm. reduce the bias as much as possible. Mm. That is only possible if you use technology right at top of the funnel. Today, companies are doing blindfolded experiments. They're doing CV blind interviews, et cetera, but doing at a scale of 100,000 screenings, 200,000 screenings annually is not possible with humans. So from that perspective, that is another aspect where uh, tools like Higher Quotient are playing a very, very important role in how do you shape the entire screening process to reduce the bias that comes very naturally. And last question, if I have to ask you, what are your top three challenges in actually uh, selling the product in the market? So what would you talk about? So I'll, I'll keep my insight uh, neutral to US and Singapore, and this is very, very early for us. So uh, take it with that perspective. I think number one challenge in the last 10, 15, 20 years, people have seen a lot of assessments, which are knowledge-based, EQ-based, um, IQ-based, et cetera. So there's a bias that comes with the word assessment. What we are trying to introduce is a concept of a virtual interviewer which is pretty much trying to simulate your first round of interview. So I think that is a newer concept, a newer category that would take its own time to develop that. I think that is one uh, big challenge. The second big challenge that I see is if you look at any industry, uh, the software penetration is almost, if you look at HR, it's almost four to 5%. Within talent acquisition, it's even lower. Uh, things like, like payroll, et cetera, have gone up in the last two years post COVID, but talent acquisition is still trying to adopt the right softwares that it needs and understand what are the technologies, tech stack that it needs to really solve its challenge. So it's from the trend perspective as well, it's early uh, that we are in the journey and there's a lot that we'll have to cover. So I think those are the two big trends, uh, geographic neutral that I can talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Smart. Thank you so much. You. So, Smart, my, my question is, uh, which, which segment of candidates are you wanting to capture? Because, see, your, your tool, as you mentioned, uh, I mean, it is, a, it is a layer, which is a virtual selection tool. So I want to understand from you, where do you see this has the best use? Is it early careers? Is it experienced lateral hires? Is it leadership hiring? So what is the segment uh, of candidates where you think this tool works the best? So I think the sweet spot is early career uh, because that is where CVs uh, are very irrelevant to say the least. So from that perspective, and we're all trying to find proxies for exceptionalism uh, to say that certain schools, certain things uh, would reflect some exceptionalism. But the moment you go wide, there are literally no proxies. So from that perspective, that is where having the right skill set matters the most. So early and how I would define that is entry to mid manager. That is our sweet spot. That is where we have been able to add a lot of value to our clients. Understand. So another question I have is, uh, you know, even even within, within the early career and say up to the mid level, there could be several skills, right? Uh, hundreds, it could run in hundreds or even thousands. So how are you addressing that, right? Is it like you will get a, C, get a JD and it could be any JD and your team is able to design uh, the virtual interview or there are set of talent or set of uh, segments of uh, skills which you are targeting and working on? Sure. Uh, I think our approach to the envy, you're 100% right in saying it's a very, very nuanced uh, answer. Uh, because there's just so much, the universe is so big for all the non-coding roles and across seniority, proficiency, new, new skills, etc. I think how we have approached this is going one job family uh, at a time. 
So for example, um, eight months back, we only had consultants. We really aced that vertical. Then we started pro product program, took us some time to think through the entire universe of what exactly different companies, different government organizations test for and recommend testing for. So that is how we have built our job profiles or job families from consulting to product program manager to sales and marketing, now customer success and data analytics, business analytics. So from that perspective, that is how, how we approach this problem. Okay, understood. And and uh, I mean, with, with regard to the integration part, right? So say, if, if I'm looking to, to add in a virtual, you know, interview to, to my, say, early career uh, uh, chain of uh, requirements. So, so I would not want to use a different system. I would want to have my ATS interact with higher quotient and, and being able to pick that selection or, or the recruiter being able to provide that, you know, shortlist for the initial virtual interview. So is, uh, you know, your, your technology uh, able to interact or integrate with the existing ATS systems? 100%. So all of the systems like Taleo, say Workday, ISIM. So it... Yeah, uh, Taleo, we've recently done, we've done quite a few other uh, integrations for our global clients as well. Um, I think, but it's case by case basis. Uh, I think very similar to how Drew was also mentioning that uh, at the stage where we startups are, uh, it's important that we uh, utilize the bandwidth at the right place. We've done integrations. We uh, would continue to invest doing the standard integrations, but depending on what's the scope, et cetera, we, we uh, have that discussion with the company. But we understand that uh, very strong preference in each and every HR company and specifically global clients is to have one common platform where HR does not have to juggle between multiple tools. We understand that and uh, we will take all the efforts to integrate in the best possible way. Okay. So my last question is with regard to the timeline, right? So cycle time is important for any of the talent acquisition professionals. So if we are Adding another virtual interview, I would want to know uh, how will it bring efficiencies and you know cut my overall uh, cycle time so that we can make, we can move quickly and we can make decisions quickly. So how do you uh, you know ensure that uh, is covered? So I think two parts to answer that question, and let me share the most relevant one first. The end outcome that we've delivered so far to our clients, fifty percent up to fifty percent interviews time and. Uh, cost saving per half. The recruitment cycle has been cut down by more than half. The gender gap has been reduced by almost 20%. So these are some of the most relevant metrics that we have delivered. The first two answers your speed part. The other aspect that I want to talk about is from our standpoint, we have worked very, very quickly. So what I showed you is 90% of the job, 80% of the job is done once you fill out that task responsibility, et cetera. Our team would set this up within two days uh, for you. So from that perspective, very, very quick, rather using higher quotient. I, I think to give you simple perspective, how we can cut down the cycle. Number one, if you analyze deeply where your team must be spending time, the majority of the time is round one, lining up the interviews of the candidate with different round one interviewers. Now, if within that, that you are up to 50% are the people who are misfits by skill set, then that's a huge time that you've already devoted with not so rare candidates. That's one. Second, your follow on interviews, if they're not structured, if uh, the, the interviewers don't have a very appropriate what to ask, et cetera, then the interviews would obviously take much longer time. We help you at both of these steps. First step, because Every candidate can be scanned by higher quotient within one day. It depends on the timeline that you want to give them, but there's no bottleneck on a person or group of people's availability. So that is where we take away a lot of time that was being invested in the process. The follow-on interviews, either companies have taken out one round or if they have not, then the follow-on interviews have become very, very shorter. We've seen them dropping from 40 minutes to almost. So from that perspective, because they exactly know what the candidate is good, not so good at.
So from that perspective, we can cut down the process for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarang. Thank you, Smart. Uh, can I request uh, Vijay from Automate uh, to get onto the hot seat? Over to you, Vijay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so welcome to uh, Automate's world. Uh, we are an integrated HR suite uh, for helping organizations in their screening and assessment journey. So uh, when we talk about the background, what I'll do is uh, I'll just quickly set this up for two minutes. I'll take it to the background through our present uh, PPT, and then I'll start looking at the demo uh, for everybody to start looking at it. So uh, we are, again, a Singapore headquartered organization having operations in India and US. And what we have been doing is helping organizations for uh, you know, hiring the right candidates. So what we call ourselves is more of um, a selection tool rather than just being a rejection tool. Because the kind of a markets we are talking about, one, the numbers are too huge, but at the same time, you just can't help uh, only serving the rejection platform of it. But so we are more of a uh, selection platform, right? We do that through our suits of products, which is typically tech assessments, non-tech assessments, a video interview platform, which is synchronous as well as asynchronous. We'll get onto that. And um, uh, a mid-sized ATFs, which is more so ever for our mid-sized companies as well, right? And when we are trying to do that, right, for all the products, our baseline stays in terms of what is that we are able to impact. So the largest of the three metrics which we are able to impact for organizations are that we intend to increase the productivity of the overall recruitment team by at least 47%. We reduce the you know, unconscionable bias or the building the variance for free hiring system you know, So by reducing it by 80%. And at the same time, most importantly, we have been able to reduce the turnaround time of hiring, right? Because you have selection ratios, you have interviews to joining ratios from a CV uh, uploading to a, you know, a finalization ratio. So there are a lot of ratios which predominantly, you know, talent acquisition team typically manages. All, all that put together, we, we are saying we'll be able to reduce the hiring TAT by close to 53%. So what I'll do is I'll quickly jump onto the demo. So. That's how we look like from an automized standpoint. What we are looking at here is more of a dashboard in terms of how intelligent the system could be in terms of giving the individual stakeholders how the product is being used at different verticals, different business units, and different locations. At the same time, team versus individuals. All right. What we are talking about is usage metrics from the consumption to allocation and sub-user credits as well. So like I said, right, we are close to screening and assessments. Right. So what typically we'll be looking at today is three of the largest products, which we'll discuss. We'll probably not be able to look at all the products today, but I'll just give you a gist about what we will discuss. Right. Uh, so one is a cognitive assessment, which will talk about regular tech assessments, but it's not just regular. We are in intelligent assessment, which is based on AI and ML, and it serves three use cases, largest of the use cases, right from your campus to laterals to even uh, you know, uh, the complex skills like from your DevOps to you know, data share or an M data science or ML or file upload questions as well. So we'll get into all that stuff, right? When we're looking at dynamic, like the name suggests, it's more adaptive in nature. What we do is this test is not dependent on question paper. It's more adaptive. That means the next question for a, client, uh, for a candidate depends upon his last answer. Okay, so we have nine complexity levels designed internally. So every time a candidate answers, the next question will be dependent upon how right that question was or how right the answer was. So accordingly, the complexity will go up or complexity will go come down, right? The third of the largest product we have is auto video. Uh, auto video serves uh, two different segments when you're talking about synchronous and asynchronous. What, what, do, my, what do I mean by synchronous and asynchronous? Synchronous is something wherein you need a panel to stay there uh, in front of the candidate over a virtual uh, environment and take the interview. The best thing, the interview platform, like an auto video synchronous platform, comes with inbuilt code editor and inbuilt whiteboard option. That means no more only having Zoom, Teams, or other kind of a cause. You can use auto video to do interviews at the same time, do your technical screening as well. For some kind of an organization, it has also come up from the enabler standpoint because a lot of a candidate doesn't take assessments. So video 
interviews are the answer because you can have video interview at the same time you can also have technical questions being answered by you know having a paired code editor and a paired whiteboarding option a whiteboarding option is typically when it is being used for devops project managers or other kind of roles as well okay uh, and the second kind of a video aspect what we have is asynchronous asynchronous is something uh, wherein you don't have a panel uh, but you can upload a couple of questions and I as a candidate can answer that one by one. So it's like, hey, Vijay, tell me about your experience with Okamai. I'll say blah, 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 blah. I'll say, okay, uh, tell me about your experience in Singapore. I'll tell you, right? So these kind of a things, it could be only audio or it could be audio plus video as well. When you talk about only audio, a lot of a campus interviews are being done there so that a lot of an influx is being rejected, right? Uh, so that's about the overview of the product. Uh, I'll, I'll just take you through in terms of what we are looking at, right? So if you look at the usage trends, it talks about you know how many invited to complete it to shortlist. It gives you an exact details of how your business or that particular business unit is functioning month on month and what is that you need to change. Okay, and then the hierarchy levels, wherein I understand every business unit or every organization will have different different business units, different geographies, and you will have a different talent acquisition POC were working for that particular business unit, right? So uh, say Nidhi or Saran sitting somewhere, they would want to understand, hey, what's ha exactly happening? Somebody sitting in Bangalore at, at a particular business unit, say a BFSI as a unit, right? What's exactly is happening? All you need to do is just go there and start looking at it, right? Understanding what's been allocated, what's been consumed and how it's being driven. Because end of the day, when the renewals comes, when you would want to start talking about what needs to be done, you need to actually talk about the ROI of the product. Right, and then it's talk about the shortlisting log. What I'll do is quickly go around, oh, you know, cognitive. What we have is two kinds of a test, which is private and public. Public is more for campus and other kind of things. Private is more for um, our laterals or other kind of things, right? So I'll quickly pick up private, predefined and manual. Manual is something that you will be able to pick up the questions. Predefined is something you'll be able to upload a JD even and the system, the NLP engine, will be able to help you out with a test paper state up. I'll select 60 minutes. The date is selected. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I can put the experience. That's about it. I'll straight away go create a test. Just three steps. That means you don't need to depend upon a technical recruiter or a technical panel to create a test, right? So even a non-tech recruiter will be able to do it. I'll not spend time in doing this kind of an aesthetic details. I'll quickly move on to questions. If you see, there are different kinds of types of the questions we're probably talking about. You're talking about MCQs. You're talking about typically coding, programming. You're talking about subjective when you are probably looking at business analysts, program managers, or DevOps wherein you need to have more uh, more elaborate questions. Every subjective question is solvable in 80 global languages. Programming questions, you're talking about 300 technologies being taken care of between MCQs and programming. Audio, video, asynchronous, like I mentioned. And we also help you uh, in terms of analyzing or evaluating front-end, API-based. That means if there are some questions where you, there needs to be a connection with GitHub, Stack Overflow, Kaggle, those connections and build a module, possible. Full stack, data science. So any kind of a full stack, you talk about Java full stack, you talk about .NET full stack, you talk about Python full stack, you're talking about JS full stack, all possible. Quickly, I'll look at you know, the questions which is being given. This is a by default you know, added questions. You'll have wealth and uh, you know, the intelligence in terms of how the questions has been used and all that. You would want to pick up anything more questions, you'll be able to go through the list and you'll be able to do that. When I go to programming, everything remains the same. What is the difference? What we believe is going by the programming language is not the right way. So what we did is, in terms of programming, we only go as per the concept. Because so if you're hiring a Java guy, Java person with one year's experience and 10 years in experience, you will end not end up asking the same question because the concepts will be different and the complexity will be different. Right? So if you're hiring a one year of a guy, you probably would want to ask concepts related to maths and geometry, solvable in Java. If you're hiring a 10 year guy, you probably would want to ask them questions related to arrays, data structures, and lists. Right? So that way, the, the system is pretty intelligent. 
I'll quickly go to step three. It's pretty straightforward details, you know, aesthetic details, which are not spent time in terms of setting up the test and cutoff marks, cushion weightage, and other kind of things. Proctoring, locations, you have disable cut, copy, paste. I'm sure everybody must have seen that. Enable full screen, or you will be able to do the number of cut switches. So you will be allowed how many times I'll be able to move out to the window. Enable full screen will automatically make up make this zero. Eyeball detection is where the intelligent AI will analyze the amount of a time a candidate is spending on the screen, the can amount of a time the candidate is spending out of the screen. Okay. So and then candidate details, you'll be able to add all the other kind of details what you will have here and then invite the candidate. What I'll do is I'll quickly go to test overview to show some reports. Yeah, I'll go to front end developer just for that. If you see, I'll get the analytics, I'll get the technologies, what, are, what people have taken. I'll just click onto it. I'll get the AMIs of all the people have taken. If you see MCQs, programming, subjective, audio, video, whatever, right? The best thing is we don't work on score. We work on a percentage. Reason being, there could be a test which consists of 50 MCQs, one programming questions, cutoff could be 70. I could be a candidate who has scored 100 out of 100 or 50 out of 50 for MCQs, but only solved two text cases. I cleared the I cleared the cutoff, but I'm not the right candidate. That's why we do a composition of it and do an average, and that's how the selection is being done. So one intelligence piece is you don't have to break your head in terms of the cutoff score in terms of whether that guy is really good or not. Right? What I'll do is let me go with Wiki. Okay, let, let, let's go to Wiki as a candidate. Or about it. We're looking at question details. We're looking at coding pretty much this. All right, so what I'll do is let me show you another candidate as well. This could be Amit. So you'll get the IP address and details as well. Go to coding. Now, if you see, all right, so this guy has cleared five out of five test cases. So another level of a selection, why we are saying we are a selection platform, an intelligent platform, and why we'll be able to help you out is we just don't stop evaluating the test cases of the candidate. What the intelligence system does, it's evaluate the code quality, which revolves around codeable, code reliability, maintainability, and the security aspect of it. Okay. So in this code, the system has identif identified one problem in this particular code, which is being highlighted. And there is an explanation for that as well. So this, your tech team will love, right? Because what typically happens is after a text case is being evaluated, the people who have been shortlisted as per the score just go to the tech, to tech panel for interviews and the tech panel ends up doing all that all these jazz to start taking the interview we're saying you don't want to do that right even if 100 people have cleared the cutoff just look at gcvs score which is a global code verification system and then decide right similarly if you go down you'll get the similar kind of results i'll i'll go to subjective i'll be able to right this is a subject i'll be able to uh, you know, score them. I'll go to project based. Look at this. Look at the kind of an intelligence the system brings on to you in terms of what is that a person should have done and what is that he has done wrong. Right? And this, your tech team would love about it. And project based is all about like combination of skill, skills like, like Nidhi was saying, csharp.net with an access to Git as a library. I have a file there. I'll, I'll bring it down here, solve it here, and upload it. Right, and that's having an audio video question slides. This is an audio file. I can just play it across. Right. Yeah, and that's a audio video file, which I can play across as well. Here yeah, I'm going to just right now. I'll show the video analysis as well. This is proctoring. You will say what amount of time the candidate is spending on the screen and outside the screen as well. One is a full video, which you'll get. The another is the unproctored i mean uh, the violations so this, like you see this guy is completely out of the window right so that way looking at screenshots this is the screenshot of the candidate and we look at this course overview as well comprehensive scores which talks about what concepts this guy has solved and within those concepts how many correct how many incorrect at the same time Within these concepts, how many easy he has solved, how many medium complexity, how many hard complexity. It goes same with all of this. Best part, I'll download the reports. What happens typically is this stack ranking is any which way slide. What happens is I'll just download a PDF. 
what happens is i as a recruiter can just send saran the text or shridam the you know um, uh, the pdf what happens would saran or shridam would have an understanding in terms of what kind of a test i have taken or kind of an approach i have done because the pdf will certainly not give it to you. it 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 gives you these details but the best part with this pdf is even without a login if this pdf is being shared with the panel the panel will be able to just click on any of these links and they'll be taken to the platform without sign in and they'll be able to do all that jazz which i was able to do there sabarin fantastic period right so you don't have to worry worry about it five of the typical five matrix and we are done with it right similarly when you are talking about uh, uh, auto video as a test right i am not creating a test because it will take some time but i'll tell you what it could do so if i as a candidate is taking a test i have taken up a test um, for um, say automate as a setup and i go to shriram for an interview as a fifth round so then shriram should actually have an idea about what exactly i have done for last four rounds exactly right and that's what the system does if you use auto video you will get the details about me as a candidate for all the previous test or an interview which i have done on the platform at the same time the platform is done is capable of doing one to one that means one to one interviews it's possible to do one to many that means if you would want to have a webinar or kind of a articulation being done it could be done many to many as well it could be done many to one which means when you are going to campus interviews you want to do group discussions that's possible because you will be able to have different rooms of people taking uh, sitting together and do some kind of a match so that's about it i guess uh, i've been able to quickly cover that um, i'll be open to questions meanwhile can i request nidhi and sarang to share the questions to vijay hi vijay nidhi hi nidhi hi i i your platform is like really cool i mean frankly speaking i was just thinking uh, the moment i'm asking okay what is this happening and then you're immediately answering that as well so frankly speaking i really do not have a question more related to uh you know the system at sir because as you talk it, it talks about a lot of nuances that a recruiter generally faces right, right. but um more around the workplace right so the trends that you are seeing in the current market and how is your automate is trying to overcome that so or probably add value proposition to the overall trend can you talk about that is there any specific value proposition because obviously the cycle remains same but in terms of the current trend that you are talking about and how automate is trying to overcome those trends or add value to those trends uh, from your perspective Thanks, Indi. Uh, when you're talking about trends, you're talking about the hiring trends or the workplace yeah. trends? hiring, hiring. trends. Yeah. Hiring. Yeah. So, I mean, typically, Nidhi, what happens is, I'm sure you'll comprehend. We are now sitting in a market wherein we sometimes we are overwhelmed with with the kind of a solutions we are available with, right? <laughs> so, typically, when you talk about, so I'll put it in three of the aspects. One is sourcing, biggest engine of. the overall talent acquisition process, and we are in a process of solving that as well, making the sourcing more intelligent. second part is more of a screening and setting it up where in you screening and intelligent uh, assessments and third part would be more of post onboarding and engagement right can so we typically would want to focus more on the first two aspect of it right wherein for a from a sourcing aspect a similar kind of a low code tool which we have built for recruiters to ask intelligent questions so what typically happens is if, if i answer if i if you know if i call sudeep as my colleague what sudeep will do is if he's good at communication he'll probably pass by the rec hr recruitment round mm -hmm. what happens is goes to the business and business shoots it down right so what we are saying is can we empower the recruiter to ask the right question ah uh, okay that way the cv rejection ratio will come down mm -hmm. once the cv rejection ratio will come down then you take assessments that means your assess assessment conversion ratio will go up if the assessment conversion ratio will go up your interview ratio will go up yeah yeah so that's how we have you know built uh, you know asynchronous and audio and video which have reduced a lot of a junk for people before Absolutely. it go to the system but like i said there's another tool uh, which is again tested by a lot of people in terms of may are helping recruiters to intelligent questioning okay thank you thank you vijay nothing from my side i'm uh, i just got answers from the demo itself so thank you thank you so much thanks nidhi
So Vijay, I would say uh, very impressive, right? Going through your demo, looking at the detailing uh, which you have shared, and then very much, uh, you know, addressing all the technologies and several of those which you have uh, talked about. So overall, uh, I find, you know, the tool very impressive. Um, uh, you know, similar to what Nidhi asked, my question is that there are, you know, several of uh, tools on assessment in the market, right? So there are several of video interviewing uh, platforms which are available. So if, if I have to ask you, you know, say one differentiator of your product versus whatever is available in the market, what would that be? Or, or to say, if, if an organization has to choose a tool of assessment or video interviewing uh, platform, uh, why should they choose you over others? Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks for the question, um, um, Saran. So I, I like to answer in this, uh, this in two to three aspects of it, right? I'm sure you have seen a lot of the products more than me for sure. Uh, but you know, most importantly, I would want to put it as more from a reporting standpoint, right? I'm sure we kill it there from a reporting and the dashboarding perspective because that gives you a you know, complete control in terms of how this spend is in the usages. That, that's completely one thing. The second way is GCVS. Like I said, a lot of our platforms today are still doing test, test, test cases based um, assessments, uh, but we go beyond that and do you know, code quality, maintainability, and sustainability. So if a tech team is just blindly going with GCVS, they'll be able to hire right hand. The third thing, which is more from data science and uh, project-based assessments, if I would want to say. Just example is, if you're talking about a data science assessments, typically other assessments, what they do is, if there are data sets, right? So I, as a candidate, needs to download the data sets, go out of the system, build my module, train and test my data, come down and approve. That means there is proctoring is not taking place. Where in my system, I'm the only system next to Kaggle, which provides you on-premise data modeling, Training data, testing data without downloading, right? That's that that's a USP what we have from a data science perspective. When you're talking about a project-based assessments, there are platforms who do only Java or JS stack full stack assessments. We are the one we're talking about Java, JS stack, .NET, Python as a stack as well, right? So that's more from an um, assessment perspective. When you're talking about a video perspective, like I said, uh, from a video perspective. We are the only platform available. Yes, there are one or two based out of the US, which has synchronous as well as asynchronous. Like synchronous, like I said, I mean, you have a panel already there and asynchronous wherein you don't have a panel needs to be there, right? So there's the only panel which connects. The best thing is when you're using the platform completely, you have continuity of reports, right? So that's, that's the crust of the video interview, right? Otherwise, end of the day, what happens is I, the recruiter will keep sharing you the reports, previous reports of a candidate as a PDF, it doesn't make sense, right? There has to be continuity because you as an interviewer would want to pre ask me questions based on my performance last, rather than just, you know, starting from something else. So that's the beauty of the continuity which we are bringing onto the table. Right, thank you. Thanks, uh, Vijay. Another question I have is, and it is not for the video platform, but for evaluation. Um, how, I mean, how do you make sure that, you know, those evaluations which are sent out to the candidates are actually completed by the, you know, the candidate themselves and, and uh, you know, they are not seeking any support or, or having somebody else to do the assessment? Right. So, like I said, we have shown you the video assessments anyway, right? The video property. Which, which talks about the amount of a time the candidate is actually spending on the screen. So it actually caters out in terms of if there's an hour of a video, how much of time I'm spending on the screen, how much of a time I'm looking out of the screen if there is a system across, I need to actually look at it out or look down to my mobile to do with it. It also recognizes the third person or the fourth person. So it, it typically works on binary zero, one. So if zero and one, if the next person comes onto the screen, it's calculated one, uh, so two and three. So it actually identifies if there is a third person on the screen, fourth person on the screen. It, it tells you the exact time the third person apart from the candidate is looking at the system, right? So that way we are making sure there's no impersonation taking care of. Right, thank you. Thank you, Vijay. No, no further questions. Thank you so Mr. much. Vijay, Sarang and Nidhi. Our aim at hrtech.sg and hrtech.in is to ensure that uh, the HR teams adopt 
uh, more technology and have a data driven approach to whatever they do um, so that they can let the technology do the operational aspects and they can fo focus more on qualitative and strategic aspects. Thank you once again for joining us on the May uh, edition of Demo Art. It was a pleasure hosting uh, all of you. Um, thank you, uh, Vijay, Drew, and Smart, and special thanks to uh, Sarang and Nidhi for uh, sharing their expertise in this session.